we've spoken about the plant medicine. We've danced around it so far. Take us through what we need to know about it. What is it? Uh, God, it's, it's diverse. It's unbelievably diverse. It's found all around the world. There's all different kinds of plants that have a psychoactive capacity associated with them. Some of them that are unbelievably mild. Uh, most people interact with these plants on a daily basis in the form of some kind of tea or coffee. Uh, you know, it's, it's, th that's what it is. It's a plant that has an ability to affect the psychological state or the state of consciousness that you're in. And then there are some that are just unbelievably extreme. And so the, the panorama that you get is just, you know, super vast. And then you get all the way to the point of the, what are considered sort of the master teacher plants. And they're the ones that most people know about, such as like ayahuasca, San Pedro, Wachuma, peyote, um, Iboga, uh, Toei, which are kind of Brugmansia or Datura. Some of them are safer. Some of them are unbelievably dangerous. You know, there's all different kinds of uh, mushrooms and things that people have heard about that create these psychedelic states or visionary states. And, um, you know, I think people around the world have, have been utilizing these kinds of plants since the origin of time. I think it's part of the natural evolution, which is why the brain has receptors for these chemicals in them in its own right. Otherwise, there would be no way to have an experience with these plants. But the plants have certain kinds of compounds in them that when in the brain and when being metabolized by the body creates a very altered state of consciousness. And then uh, people, you know, often refer to that as like tripping, you know, or something like that. But that's very... Uh, unguided and undirected. And then you get all the way to like Amazonian plant medicine, where there are people who've actually learned how to guide and direct the states of consciousness that people go through in those ceremonies when they have ingested those kinds of plants, really for the purpose of healing or for the purpose of exploration and transformation. So it's for healing or learning and the kinds of healing uh, has been now documented over the last 20, 30 years as being unbelievably vast and uh, really important from depression to anxiety disorders, PTSD, um, all different kinds of uh, traumatic events from the past that people have healed uh, from as benign as just the difficulties of growing up all the way to truly incurable, uh, diagnosed, you know, by psychologists and psychiatrist illnesses that these plant medicines have been able to ultimately treat. And uh, in the indigenous sense, there's a, a person who's called a shaman or a medico vegetalista, which means doctor of plants. And they know how to guide that experience. And they do so through sound and through the altered state of consciousness that they've learned how to be a part of. So it's a, it's a slightly different kind of medicine than you experience from a Western doctor who sort of gives you a prescription and says, here, go take these pills. In this case, the doctor takes the medicine with you. So you guys sit down together and you, you both uh, tip back the cup of tea or whatever it is that you guys are using to, to do this kind of healing ceremony. And then you go into an altered state of consciousness that has a real purpose. And the purpose of the altered state of consciousness is to ultimately take you into a personal recognition that you have transcended uh, the illness. You have transcended whatever it is that was afflicting you and actually now has created a state of healing. And on the other side of that journey, you come out of it transformed and or healed.